Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Dot. Com. <laughs> How are you? We are talking Sniper. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> One more time. Ryan Robbins, how are you? We are talking Sniper Rogue Mission. This is like the 73rd installment of this franchise. Congratulations <laughs> on all its success. Yeah, it's nice. 72nd, 73rd is coming. That's next year. Yeah. Yeah. No, Thank you, man. Thank you. It's really good to meet you. It's great to meet you, too. It's the ninth installment. I talked to Chad Michael Collins yesterday. So we chatted a bit about it. You know, we uh, we mentioned that uh, Josh Brenner is really an amazing athlete as a, uh, a free runner and just gets typecast as the wrong characters, but he flies under the uh, under uh, the cover of night. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> no, Josh is a great guy. So I'll, ne I'll never say one bad thing about him. I want to talk up Josh as much as I can. I don't think you can. I don't think there's anything bad to say about the guy. He's one of the coolest, funniest, nicest humans on the planet. Yeah, he's that's the a, best. That seems to be the general consensus, and also from my own experience. So that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's his it's his wit I can't keep up with. I'm just like, dang, he can. He that's his superpower is his wit. He wields that thing like a he wields wit like a sword. He will cut you deep with his wit. <laughs> that's for sure. And you know, this movie we have to make a little light in the beginning because. Sniper is kind of heavy, man. Well, what kind of heavy? It's really heavy. We're going into human trafficking rings. Yeah. 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 And and freeing the people that have suffered through all this nonsense. Correct. Yeah, I think, you know, you always need to keep something really important, you know, that the the cause, you know, has to be something important and, and we needed something that was going to bring uh, a group of people together, you know, in in Assassin's End we were a series of individuals, you know, we we're a bunch of loners, uh, lone wolves coming, working together. But in this one, it, it's a, it's a common cause that everybody can agree, uh, needs to come to an end. So, um, it, I think it was really bold of Oliver to, to, to do that. Um, in the, in the, uh, in the sniper verse, but at the same time, you know, it, it's an important story to tell. And, and, and the challenge was, uh bringing the levity in and out of, of 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 the storytelling there and i think oliver did such an amazing job um you know helping us let the audience off the hook from time to time and uh we made sure that the the moments that needed to land heavy landed heavy and, and were sincere and uh and i think that was how we were able to then counter it with the levity because that's just that's real life that's that's the nature of of humanity right we we can't stay you know solemn for too long we have to try to get out of our funk and, and, and uh i think oliver did a wonderful job writing that right this is not a french film where we're just going to leave you depressed for six months after watching a two-hour flick correct and yeah yeah and you know we 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 do know our audience we, we love our audience very much and so you know our, our job is to give you something that roots in emotion and, and that you that matters to you and then entertain you uh, for 90 minutes and make sure you just want to sit with your popcorn and your soda and your friends and, and have a good time and and leave a little energized like that's what our movies are supposed to make you feel you know we're supposed to entertain you uh shamelessly and and give you some action and some drama and some comedy and just you know you want to leave you know when, when, when you're done watching our film you want to feel like you just had a really good time you know that that you felt things and uh, you got distracted from whatever silliness was going on in your life, maybe, you know? And more importantly, we don't feel any sort of sympathy or empathy for the villains. Correct. Correct. Just fuck those guys. Yeah, especially, especially with a movie about human trafficking and sex trafficking, we never want to be empathetic for those types of, types of villains. No, and, and, and look, that's the thing about the, the subject matter. When you're, when you're talking about a film, there's no question who the who the bad guy is you know um when, when we're when we're making these films um and and then you know on top of that we had an incredible cast that stepped up to the plate to deal with all this and the crew was phenomenal i mean some of those days were legitimately intense they were difficult days to shoot you know you could feel it um on some of those sets you could feel the 
the weight of what we were what we were doing and i think that was a, a little bit unusual for us um and it really mattered to everybody uh to do to do a really good job and and not not phone it in in any way and not take it not be too lighthearted about those moments you know um it was a it was a really interesting challenge. This whole film was such a such a wonderful roller coaster to be on as an actor. You know, people think, oh, you do these action movies, like I must be just you just go in and punch people and blow things up and tell some jokes. And it's like this, they're not these 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 films are are rooted in in a lot of emotion, and and that's what I love about doing them. Yeah, and the fact that there's a lot of physicality, there's a lot of energy in there that that you can't pull off in a romantic comedy correct you could try i mean if you're paul rudd maybe but he's about the only one i could think of right well let's, yeah paul's about it that's it yeah, yeah. and yeah. josh uh, and josh and josh, josh definitely there, josh yeah yeah. yeah yeah and i love josh. that's the only reason why i will ever say anything in regards to him and you know he'll probably watch this and go i don't even remember this guy and he's still talking me up that's good he, josh has a pretty good memory i think he would remember actually but with, with everything that's going on, the film itself, you know, it's coming out August 16th, uh, you know, to home entertainment. We're ready. We want some excitement. We want to know who our heroes are supposed to be, who our good guys are, you know, the old Western white hat, black hat uh, type motif, uh, especially that we get to see in this. We want some humor. We want some quick wit. And we're getting that with, with this sniper film. Yet, even though the story is quite heavy. Um, when you sit there and you watch back what was recorded and then realize how significant the stunt people are, which they don't often get enough credit that, that they deserve, but I know you and Chad have always been full force and respectful uh, of the stunt people, but also the military personnel. What does that say about them and their training, your guys, you guys in this situation or in this film, because of the fact that you have to be as accurate as possible, yet cranked up to 11? Yeah, it's really great that you brought that up. I, we, Chad and I both take this stuff very seriously. Um, I train with uh, some special forces friends of mine um, before every film. Um, and uh, they're amazing and they're a wonderful source for me. I'll even phone them up with certain lines of dialogue or certain behavior um, because I, I come from a military family and I, I, it is important to me to, to, um, to do those those folks justice uh and then you know our stunt team on assassin's end we had brett chan and, and hits international was our stunt team and we used them again and, and brett sent his a team he sent his a player johnny yang who is incredible and just watching johnny move is is inspiring and then sean beaton who's an old buddy of mine uh worked with johnny and then we had our our, our incredible local stunt crew which is headed by um bj vero and it was everybody busted their asses. Everybody worked so hard and the, the choreography was amazing. And Chad and I both have fight experience. I've been a martial artist since I was 10. So um, it, it's, you know, Johnny really recognizes your strength and your weakness. And just if you look at Chad and I, you know, Brandon is the stealth guy. Zero is the brute force guy. That's the way Oliver's always, always talked about it. That's why I take so many beatings you know zero can he'll go in and he'll he'll come he'll he'll get through it but he's not getting through it with much technique it's it's just he's just in beast mode you know um when i we first started talking about zero before assassin's end they said it's like if, if wolverine and tony stark had a baby and i was like i'm your guy you should um, sign me up i don't even need a script that's that's i want to play that guy uh so that's what we do so, you know, Chad does the stealth stuff and, and all of his choreography is that it. And with me, I have a wrestling background and a, and a grappling background um, as well as boxing and, and martial arts. But uh, we just, we lean on that. We lean on me being the close contact guy. And even in Chad's fights, you see he, he, him and Sayak could fight a lot at a distance or tra hand trapping, um, which is super fun. And she's amazing. I think Sayak is probably the hardest worker in the room at all times the way she plays lady death the way the, the way she how hard she works english is not her first language uh and 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 then she'll be kicking ass and in the stern she looks terrifying and as soon as you hear cut big beaming smile and she's just like the loveliest happiest person and she's such a joy to be around 
So, yeah, we were very lucky to be surrounded with um, such an amazing team. It's really, really, I, I don't know how we got all these people. It's incredible. Well, that, that's incredible and makes it more fun to watch and especially realizing the ba the backstory of everything. Yeah, you know, uh, in our pre-interview, I mentioned you know Disney, and but what made Disney magical is that they revealed just enough behind-the-scenes information that made you even more excited about it, especially with Wonderful World of Disney when you watch those old clips. And these interviews, I like to find out more of the background scenes, so it just makes it that much more magical when we sit there and watch the film put together from from A to B. Well, that's it. I mean, when you found out in Top Gun Maverick that those that that cast was, they were actually experiencing G's in an actual cockpit. And you know that when you're watching it, man, is that ever satisfying to watch. You just, mind is blowing. I love talking about, I love talking about the stunt teams. I, I have such great admiration and respect. My early days when I was trying to break into this industry, I was doing stunts and, and uh, you know, in, way way in over my head on a lot of the things i was like my first movie i ever did was a jackie chan movie you know i it was an incredible experience but holy crap was i nervous because I, I literally felt the, the imposter syndrome i felt when i was doing stunts was very real because i was just a scrappy kid that like was willing to hit the, hit the dirt and my training was okay but the people that i met who i'm friends with to this day still inspire me and they're still just insane like we, I get to work with legends, man. Like I get to work with legends that the audience might not even know about. If I can let you know about who's my stunt double, if you look up Jack Kingley, his life is incredible. You know, um, Sean Beaton, Johnny Yang, these legends. Like, I work with legends. It's no, no question. It almost feels emasculating when you sit there and you're talking to Johnny. He's like, oh yeah, last week I was lit on fire three times in one shoot. Yeah. You're like, well, of course you were. Of course you were. <laughs> Like I thought, like you know, Jack's my Jack's one of my. He's my stunt double, but he's also a really good friend of mine. And I was like, "What did you do today? Were you riding your horse, your motorcycle, or your drift car?" And he's like, "Well, I start. I was surfing first, uh, and then I went and rode my horse. But then tonight I have to go get lit on fire." And he's like, "Yeah, it's, that's, of course, that's your life. I'm gonna go walk my Tuesday dog. He's gonna after. ride the horse on top of the motorcycle. Yeah, and they're all. Everybody's gonna be on fire. The whole thing, <laughs> the flaming inferno." Well, you got your wrestling background. So for the next sequel, let's see you shoot a double transition into a high C and then face plant somebody. You know, give the wrestling Damn. Something. Okay, RC. Nicely done. You know, give us Matt and I, something I, too, man. Don't forget about us. You know, man, I, listen, I, uh, I'm the, uh, I like the, I like a little high crotch single because as a grappler, I can get you down and get you in side control pretty quick. But uh, those are, man. Nice blast double. I've never been great at the blast double, but man, when I see a guy execute a solid, solid, oh, that is one of the most satisfying things to watch. Yeah. You know, be, being one of the taller wrestlers, it was hard to do a blast double, especially when you're wrestling a, a shorter guy. Yeah. Well, I'm not. Tall. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's I, why, I, that's I'm why you got tall, the Wolverine but... Tony Stark thing going. Correct. And I'm going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> so long as you're not five, four. No, no, no. Five, five nine after a good stretch, man. There you go. Go to the chiropractor. You'll be five eleven. Working <laughs> on that. Yeah. <laughs> so with this one coming out on the sixteenth, you know the reactions obviously been great. If there's been nine of these sniper films, yeah. You know, are we planning for ten? And how soon are we going to get behind or get in front of the camera for the for those? Yes, I I've been told I'm allowed to say yes. We are shooting. Uh, 10 um it will be the it's the 10th movie it's the 30th anniversary of the franchise i believe so they want to do something special uh i've read the script it's fantastic uh and um we will we go to camera uh, late september early october nice and is this going to be a musical just to beat fast and the furious to it oh good could you imagine uh well there will be music there will be music. I mean, if you listen to the soundtrack of uh, Rogue Mission, that's that's all. That's Oliver, man. That's our that's our fearless. That's our that's the the architect of the sniperverse. You know, writer, director, composer. He is incredible, and we have joked mercilessly because a lot of us are musicians on the show, and we have joked mercilessly about doing some, even if it's just like a gag reel thing, creating a, a band, and you know, make the White Dragon band real and 
you know. So we'll see. That'd be fun. Clo- closing credit scene. Or mid credit. Yeah, oh man. There you go. Yeah, the oh my god, beating Fast and Furious in the musical. That was great. That's well played. Well played. Thank you. We have our moments, you know. <laughs> so as, as this movie comes out, you know, the press we a lot of us that have already seen it enjoyed it and we're we're happy to talk to you about the film because if it was bad, I wouldn't be sitting here. I was like, yeah, never mind. Um when, when you get the reaction of, you know what, I liked seven better than eight, but I like nine better than three. And all these back and forth uh, comparisons between the franchise over the last three decades. What does that say, not only to the longevity, but to the evolution of the stories within the sniper verse? I love it. I, lo- I, lo- I love being able to have those conversations and hearing those opinions. And when somebody will say something like that, they have a very specific reason. It's not just, I don't know why I like this one better than this one. It's like, I like this one because. Um, and I think when we did Assassin's End, we did eight, uh, we we sort of visually defied the, the the our own genre in a sense with Kari Andrews directing it, having that comic book style. And it was so successful and it was so fun and what a great way to inv- reinvigorate the franchise. I think moving forward, we realized that we can sort of play in that, play in those different sandboxes a little bit in our, our, our fan base and our audience is on board, um, you know, going into Rogue Mission after Assassin's End, we knew we wanted more of a buddy cop vibe uh, kind of movie. And so visually, Oliver did a phenomenal job paying homage to all those great, uh, you know, all those great sort of buddy cop movies and action movies back in the day um, with some really cool visuals, you know, and, uh, even a few shots that are, dare I say, a little like spaghetti westerny, which I loved so much when he he did that. I I, I, uh, I watched the film, and I was like, oh, oh, that's what we were doing. Why I didn't know why were we on a rooftop? And you were I don't know where the camera was. It was a mile away, and I was just listening to a walkie talkie. I was like, sure, Oliver, you tell me what to do, and I'll do it. You know, and then you see the shot, and you're like, oh my god, it's amazing. Um, so I I'm really. It, it's so so nice to legitimately and honestly say that I'm so proud of the film. Like I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I watched it. I, it was so entertaining. I I thought, and it was like it was grounded where it needed to be, and super fun where it needed to be. And it was different. It was unique. It was a, it was a fresh. It was another fresh sniper movie. It, we're not repeating any tropes here. So it, it, I, I thought it was great and the banter you know, Brandon and Zero, it, it, that just is, that just started to come really naturally with Chad and I. That's awesome, man. I love hearing that. Uh, with with this one, you know, 10 is a, 10's already been written and it's in the can. Well, not in the can. It's going to start filming. And then 11, we're clearly expecting 11 to be on the way. You being Canadian, is there ever a moment where, like, you want to disguise yourself as a Mountie? And just you know, have some sort of like Canadian brigade go being involved in this. No, no, <laughs> I, I, we well, oh, it's funny you say that. We were talking about something. Oliver and I were talking about something similar uh, recently. I've got this monster. I'm doing another job right now, and I've got this monster beard, and it's the most sort of Canadian. I think zero w- would have looked if we did this, <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I do secretly want to, um, put some Canadian, uh, proud Canadian references in there. I just haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. Like a couple of cans of Tim Horton laying around or something. Yeah. A little Tim Horton's coffee or, uh, you know, maybe just zero, just eating some poutine in the, <laughs> In the back, you know, that's just that's a meal of choice. And you guys say American diet is horrible, man. Just that stuff is heavy. It's cheese and gravy and French fries. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> no, nothing except clogged arteries. You know, what's even better is you throw bacon on it. That'll that'll blow you your mind. Healthy. A little, a little maple bacon. You see, a little ma- so it's bacon soaked in a little maple syrup. You put that on your poutine, and then uh, and then you're good to go. Or pulled pork. Oh, I'm not hungry. I see how it's going, man. Listen, you know, 
uh, Ryan, we're running out of time, unfortunately, because I could talk to you about this all day, and then we can talk about wrestling, and then judo, and jujitsu, and everything else that goes on. Likewise, then we're going to get into comic books, and then we're going to get into, yeah, and then I'll, I'll never shut up. Right, and then you know we got to figure out uh, which uh, which superhero you'd ever want to play, and then from there we got to ask on Tuesday why do we got to sit down and watch Sniper? Why do you sit down and watch Sniper? Because you want to be entertained. Because you want to, you know, you want a distraction from all the craziness that's going on in the world, and you don't want somebody to tell you how to feel about something. You want to just sit and watch a movie, have a great time have a soda and some popcorn and it's 90 minutes. We're not trying to sit you through three hours of, you know, tugging at your heartstrings. We're here to be like, listen, let's, let's tell a really important story and, and, and let's ground it in something, you know, you know, heavy and solid, but we're going to have a great time, you know, solving this mystery, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and bringing baddies to justice because, that's what the sniper movies do. You know, we uh, we bring the bad guys to justice. I love it. Ryan Robin, thank you so much. Sniper Rogue Mission is available August 16th on Home Entertainment. Where, where can we find you on social media if we want to connect with you? Uh, Instagram is at Rain City Ryro. Um, and then Twitter, if people still do that, it's just Ryan Robbins. <laughs>